What's up guys, it's Tommy and this is a huge breaking news story because Miguel Delaney, Ben Sabochak and various other journalists are reporting that Saudi Arabia are determined to strike a huge deal to buy a Liverpool football club and they are thinking about selling Newcastle because you can't own more than 30% of two football clubs in the same league, so in the Premier League, but the FSG are looking to sell as well, there was a well documented documented the story a couple of years ago and Liverpool are still in conversation with within Saudi Arabia as the country looks to inspe- expand its football reach and uh, John Henry right now is in talks with Saudi Arabia and the PIF the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia over you know other investments in golf but uh, it looks like Miguel Adelina is thinking and uh, is saying that uh, Saudi Arabia wants to own a bigger football club because they are very limited by Newcastle's revenues uh, and that could be the main reason and also the World Cup being hosted in Saudi Arabia in 2034 the country has set ambitious plans to make the tournament a huge success they are also growing the Saudi Football League and they, they want to have major huge investments in football and Saudi Arabia is one of the richest countries in the world because of oil and uh, they are still eyeing a huge Liverpool deal with FSG. So even though PIF are currently the owners of Newcastle, according to the latest reports by Miguel Delaney, which we will take a look at in a second, Saudi Arabia has set its sights on something even greater, a bigger club, and they are thinking about buying Liverpool. But they are they also have Chelsea and Barcelona on their radar as well. So FSG are open to selling Liverpool if a huge enough offer comes in, and who else? but Saudi Arabia who could table a huge offer that could persuade FSG to sell Liverpool. The big question is how would the Liverpool fan base react? Uh, let me know in the comments below. So I want to gauge, uh, gauge the opinion of my audience. Just say are you in favor of uh, potentially Saudi Arabia buying Liverpool or not? Do you want that or do you don't want that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And some people are saying that anyone, any big club who is bought by Saudi Arabia would be unstoppable because remember Saudi Arabia has 10 times the money that Man City owners have uh, the owners are you know the Man City's owners are you know Abu Dhabi the United Arab Emirates but Saudi Arabia if they be- become involved with either Liverpool or Chelsea then they could be unstoppable because those clubs have much greater revenues than Newcastle so they could in theory spend a lot more money without breaking uh, financial Fabri rules, profit and sustainability rules. And also in June 2024, the PIF, the Saudi Investment Fund, bought uh, the four leading clubs in the Saudi Pro League, Al Ali, Al Ettihad, Al Hilal, and Al Nasser, allowing them to bring in a host of household name additions. And according to the Independent, there are rumors that Saudi chiefs are eyeing on are eyeing both Liverpool and Chelsea. And there has been even suggestions that Barcelona could be an option given uh, their financial issues. So Miguel Darini writes in the Independent, there is even the feeling within the game that the Saudi state is ultimately eyeing a bigger club. Rumors abound about both Liverpool and Chelsea and also Barcelona's financial troubles are even seen as potentially bringing an end to the club's full member ownership and forcing the sale of a partial stake So if Barcelona are forced to sell uh, some of their shares or like a big portion of them, then Saudi Arabia would be interested in them as well. Chelsea were bought by the Blue Co Consortium in a 4.2 billion takeover in May 2022. And they also pledged an investment of 1.75 billion afterwards. And they spent all of that pretty much on players. And uh, if uh, Chelsea was worth 4.2 billion, then Liverpool could be worth around five, five and a half billion pounds, which is an absolute mind-blowing fee. And if FSG get that kind of offer from Saudi Arabia, I, I can't really think that they would turn it down unless there was huge mass protests uh, from Liverpool fans. But it's important to note that rules uh, stipulate that an individual owning more than 30% of a Premier League club cannot own a second Premier League club. So if the PIF wants to buy Liverpool, first they have to sell Newcastle or they have to sell enough 
shares that they only own less than 30% of Newcastle because remember PIF own uh, some percentage of Chelsea just not above 30%. I think state ownership should be banned from football. We Football went down a very dangerous road when they allowed, allowed first an oligarch, uh, Roman Abramovich, to buy Chelsea. That was the first domino to fall. Then they allowed a state, the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi, to buy Man City. And that's when football, and the Premier League especially, sold its soul to money and to oil. Because now that Newcastle was allowed to be taken over, the UK government have, had even influenced that. Now it has been clear as day what we all su suspected. And I said for years in my previous videos that uh, the United K Kingdom government surely put pressure on the Premier League to allow the Newcastle takeover to happen. Because it was awfully suspicious that first the Premier League rejected the PIF buying Newcastle and then six months later, miracle, they finally allowed it. So what changed? The UK government put pressure on the Premier League to allow the deal to, take, to be allowed uh, because uh, Saudi Arabia have huge multi-billion pound contracts with England, with the United Kingdom for weapons and all kinds of things. And uh, Saudi Arabia also have massive investments in the UK. They own a lot of big companies, a lot of big buildings and uh, a lot of uh, real estate in London as well. So the United Kingdom have uh, very close ties with Saudi Arabia. They, they don't want the money to stop flowing. That's the bottom line. And FSG already sold a small stake of Liverpool to global sports investment firm Dynasty Equity. And there are rumors that Liverpool would be open to a full sale of the club because they they seeked investment before. It would be a little bit surprising though because uh, FSG just brought in Michael Edwards to be the CEO of football at FSG, not just the CEO of Liverpool. So they are looking to expand their football portfolio. But there is value to everything. And if Saudi Arabia table an irresistible offer then FSG could sell Liverpool. But here is some Liverpool fans opinion on the issue. Saudi takeover would be repulsive for many Liverpool fans, we have to acknowledge that. FSG might not be perfect but we would venture to suggest that the overwhelming majority of Liverpool fans would happily continue to have FSG as owners if it meant that the club would never fall into the hands of a state with such an appalling human rights record. Even if theory Theoretically, PIF would be able to inject a level of investment outside the reach of Liverpool's current owners. Liverpool would still have won and competed for major trophies consistently under the current regime. And of course, there are levels to this. So FSG are not perfect owners. The American businessmen are not like squeaky clean, but it's better than being owned by the state of Saudi Arabia. And the Liverpool fans are saying we, we, we wouldn't want to see our beloved club become entangled in the controversy over associated party transactions which of course has engulfed Man City, Newcastle contentiously standing as witnesses for, the, for Man City in their recent legal case against the Premier League. As a collective fan base, Liverpool supporters take enormous pride in certain ideals which go beyond football. The whole city and uh, the Liverpool fans have a certain, you know, history and a certain ethical code. It's not what modern football is all about. It's all about money and investment and it's a business. So a Saudi Arabia takeover would go against many of the values that Liverpool fans and the city of Liverpool hold dear to their hearts. And we would imagine it would be protested and detested by many Liverpool fans. So this website, who is, which is run by Liverpool fans, are saying let's hope that day never comes. That's why I want to ask your opinion and that's why I wanted to sh for you guys to share your opinion because I'm very interested. Uh, I would love to see a percentage of how many of you guys are for Saudi Arabian investment and against Saudi Arabian investment. I mean the full sale of the football club, not just a small investment because I would be against the full sale of Liverpool football club to a state, any state, not just Saudi Arabia, any country. No country should own a whole football club in the Premier League or any league in, as a matter of fact. But I would be for a 
partial stake. So if FSG said, let's sell 25% of Liverpool to the PIF and Liverpool get like one and a half, two billion pounds invested into the, into the football club. Imagine what that amount of money would do. But you could also argue, why would Saudi Arabia buy just 25% of Liverpool for one, one and a half billion if they didn't make, get to make decisions? Then they wouldn't get great return for their money because Saudi Arabia are not venture capitalists who just wants to um, maximize their portfolio. They want to sports wash their image through football and that's why they bought, wanted to buy Newcastle United because now many Newcastle fans are defending the owners of Saudi Arabia and that's exactly what sports washing is about. We also have to take note of uh, Chelsea already having links to Saudi Arabia because uh, the Chelsea ownership has some part of uh, you know PIF being invested in uh, that uh, ownership group and also American billionaire Todd Bowley does hold a positive relationship with uh, Saudi Arabia because uh, the two parties dealt with one another when agreeing the transfers of Ancolo Kante, Khalidou Koulibaly, Eduard Mendy to the Saudi Pro League. But the Chelsea owners have a 10-year plan for Chelsea that they are not willing to sell Chelsea anytime soon. Liverpool already have some ties to Saudi Arabia because Liverpool confirmed a Saudi Arabia deal with um, you know, a youth academy being built in Saudi Arabia and being opened by Liverpool. And Liverpool has an international academy which has been over running for over a decade in various parts of the world. And now Liverpool will be opening its doors in Saudi Arabia's capital, Riyadh, after striking an agreement with One World International School to host Liverpool's international academy in Saudi Arabia. So already Liverpool have sometimes some ties to Saudi Arabia. And now uh, Liverpool's website confirmed that Liverpool have academies in Europe, Asia, North America and Australia as well. And Mikolas Delaney's report is saying that uh, Saudi Arabia could be forced to sell Newcastle United if these early allegations are proven to true that the leaked WhatsApp messages showed there wasn't a separation between the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia and the state, the country of Saudi Arabia, even though the Premier League received legally binding assurances from PIF that it doesn't have direct ties to the Saudi government, to the Saudi state. And senior, senior figures at rival clubs of Newcastle, so Liverpool, Arsenal, even uh, Tottenham and Man United, they raised very, very serious concerns. And uh, in fact, these uh, cl big clubs officials remain furious that the purchase was allowed to go ahead by the Premier League, especially with how it has directly led to the current chaos engulfing elite football through the Manchester City associated party transaction case. The story has also raised frustrations that complaints, complaints raised during the Livgov case in March 2023 were never pursued. Directly contradicting the Premier League's assurances, PIF's lawyers argued that the fund was a sovereign instrumental, instrumentality of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia even though to the Premier League they said it was not. Richard Masters, just one month ago, is the Premier League chief executive, stated that, the, uh, that there was a corporate difference between PIF and the Saudi state and that if we find evidence to the contrary, we can remove the consortium as owners of the club. Now do what you said. Newcastle should be forced to be sold by the owners because they lied on the fit and proper Premier League owners test and they said they are not the state of Saudi Arabia when in fact they were. And many within football are now saying they feel such an argument is absurd that um, since PIF is the Saudi state and there were furious discussions that were had when the takeover went through. So the game of football is getting some hard knowledge of what state ownership actually means and this may be just the start, Miguel Delaney is saying. The entire story once more reveals forces that football can't control and why it needs to be institutionally ring-fenced. So in an, an independent regulator can't come soon enough, according to Miguel de Rini. Of course, there are multiple problems with other types of ownership, not least capitalist funds, but the issue is one of scale. You have uh, like small and medium-sized medium, medium, medium -sized problems 
weird capitalist uh, venture capitalists and capitalist funds buying football clubs. And then you have enormous sized problems when a whole country, a whole state buys a football club. And the out outcome of, the, the, of this APT case, uh, so Man City claims thrown out, but they did win on certain technical procedures and uh, many store sources talk of chaos within the Premier League. The several clubs are still unsure on how to vote on this issue. And you only have to look at Manchester City from a wider perspective. All of the most rudimentary warnings about state ownership from years back have come true. They are dominating English football to a scale never seen before. They have won six out of the last seven Premier League titles and they made the Premier League a one-team league, directly affecting the unique selling point of the Premier League because the Premier League always advertised themselves as the, as the most competitive league where anyone can beat anyone and anyone can win the title title out of the top six or seven clubs. That's not true anymore. Man City have sweeped up all the Premier League titles and if it wasn't for Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp, they would have won seven in a row. Can you imagine seven titles in a row? And a further irony is that Newcastle actually represents the quietest of Saudi Arabia's own large-scale sporting plans. The noise about golf and boxing are pretty impossible to ignore. And the Saudi Pro League has up upended the game's economy because they, want to host, uh, they wanted to host the World Cup in 2034. So the game of football is in a very uncertain place and I want to pick your brain. I want to hear your opinion about it. Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.